Sorry. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting? Sure. Do we have a second? Okay. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Agenda is approved. We'll move into the consent items. Do any board members have any questions or comments on any of those? I assume it's a class. It is. Yeah. It's a uh, post-secondary class. Is, is that normally when we get these, or why is this, is this a tail end? Anymore? It's a little late, but at the end of second semester. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, normally, I'd hurry and through to get them on the, the correct year. So, I mean, they're still on the correct year, but you're just seeing them later. Okay. But normally, we would see those like in April. Any other questions on the consent items? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the consent items? We have a motion. Do we have a second? All in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign. Consent items are approved. Does it look like we have any correspondence this evening? So we'll move into public form. Let's go by a sign in. Uh, Sue, you were first. I think we received an email from you. So, oh. I have a reason for selecting a particular topic I did of making the suggestion that um, students who need some remediation try using the concepts that are part of the national curriculum as remediation not part of the Iowa approved curriculum. They are an extension of what Iowa left out of its curriculum because we've had very good luck in using that at home. And my reason for suggesting <coughs> one, because some of the methods being used in the school for remediation that are not relying on effectively teaching concepts to um, fill in some of the gaps being left by the Iowa curriculum that some students can kind of mentally leap over and make connections, but not everybody can. So that's why I'm making the suggestion. You're not entitled to changing the curriculum. You're using the additional concepts for the remediation. That will help. But what we, our family experienced this past year was the remediation being used that the student found very demeaning and very upsetting emotionally. So yes, we did complain about it. And yes, we did go to the ACLU who said it is a violation of ESSA. But due to some medical issues in the family all this spring, three operations this summer, another one coming up two weeks from today, the parents were not able to be a party to it. Otherwise, there would have been a lawsuit. In order to use concepts, not the methods that were being used. So bear that in mind. These schools get extra money for students that are in special debt, but you can avoid having to do all that extra if you're actually using all of the concepts that they need to make the connections to everything. It, it works really well. And since all of that is available online now, anyway, any parent can buy it and kind of fill in all of these concepts. There's really no reason for the schools to try to use alternatives just because some other school is using it. Yes, you might have a small handful of students with particular situations that might require something a little different. But if you can get them to mentally engage with the concepts, and there are various, there's always starting from uh, additional teaching practices that we've noticed that are helping considerably with that. So that's why I'm simply making the suggestion now. And it can also help what you're seeing in the way of what I saw in the article on the testing because you are using it, you're using the additional concepts to fill in the gaps. And with the additional teaching methods that you've been experimenting with successfully, especially small groups to help kids mentally engage, it can be much more helpful than some of the past remediation methods that have been tried that are making some students feel like they're not very really smart or not able to learn otherwise the way things are being done. So it could be a really good help for the school. The gist of what I said in the email. And I don't read the whole thing yet. It doesn't look exactly like 
I typed it, but it still covers everything. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Christy? Thank you. Uh, this evening, I have two questions that I would request a uh, response to. And if you're not willing to respond this evening, then I expect a follow up following this meeting. First, I would like to know what this administration and board's position is on transparency. Um, if your elected officials and public servants of a government run school that is funded by taxpayers in this community. And so I'd like to understand what your position is um, related to transparency in, in the school. Related to that, I would like to understand what the school and administration's view is of charging exorbitant fees of parents when they ask for information related to curriculum and basic things that should be done by the school and administration. It seems like an overreach, especially when you're a publicly funded government run school to then turn around and charge parents exorbitant fees to try to get basic information that should be provided that way. Second, uh, thank you very much for posting all of the videos, Dr. Clapper, that you mentioned that you did get posted. I truly appreciate that. I went back and watched the May video and I would like clarification on what edits were needed. Uh, last meeting, you mentioned that there was illegal activity that happened in the main meeting that needed to be edited out of the video that was posted. So for the community's benefit and to know what illegal activity or activity was not allowed that happened in that main meeting, it would be good, again, for transparency of the community to understand <coughs> what edits were made and why, so that we all know in the future expectations and things that are appropriate during school board meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sherry Phelps. Hi, I just, I just um, be masked. I just want to say thank you for your service. You know, when we were employed for two years, we had a tremendous number of jobs between pandemic and legislation and some difficult subjects and people and personalities to navigate. And we've done it with dignity and um, respect. And the first time I came back to reopen the home, and I went to a school board meeting. It was not my favorite meeting in the world. Uh, I was absolutely impressed with the, the student was there with purple hair, and I thought, well, she's in trouble. And she wanted a calculus class, and the president of your school board said, absolutely, we'll figure it out. And I was floored. I've never seen such compassion and immediate response to help one child and then help several children. And we were um, very appreciative parents you know, for our and you and I would have quit this job multiple times and asked and I appreciate that. And please know that you don't hear the positives a lot of times and there are a lot of people out there that really care and take care of you. So thank you. Thank you. Richard Phelps. I would just echo what my wife said. I think she said it pretty well. Uh, <laughs> Um, Mike, would you like to follow up with questions, I can, Chris? I mean, we, if you're not prepared to address them tonight, if you want to email no, I, those. I, I can just address in general. Anything that happens during a closed session is private and it's not to be shared in public. And um, it was brought to our attention and watching the video, the original copy of the video, the conversation that happened in the closed session was confidential. And it was one of the staff members came out here and read her statement and that broke by that that broke the confidentiality and so we couldn't rebroadcast it so that's the part that was cut out just that section uh, we'll move on to our business items and we have principals reports so rob do you want to go first tonight Sure, it's always a tough one because we just are getting our feet under us. Uh, actually, the first point I have is we had new staff in today. Um, it was really um, different than anything we'd ever had because we had a large number, I think it was 10 total, and only one of those 10 was a brand new teacher. 
So usually when we sit in those meetings, we've had 10 before, or, you know, whatever the number is, but it's usually lots of new staff and figure out why that is. Uh, I, I don't know, but I know that we have a lot of staff bringing a, a wealth of knowledge from other districts, which we really tapped into already today in some of our conversations, how it's been done where you were, um, just some protocols and processes. We really talk a lot about culture today, things in their other districts that were positive in their culture and things that weren't, and how important that large of number of people coming into our workplace will be really will affect our culture. So we had a really good day, lots of different things went on. So our whole staff will come back uh, uh, tomorrow morning with everybody. Uh, we had a Monday, I don't know if Zach may talk about it, it was set up by, I think Jason, but Zach took the reins on this. Solution Tree came in Monday, um, which was, um, if you don't know Solution Tree, it's kind of the group, and to have somebody in your building from that, organization and spent time out of we had 30 35 staff members probably it was a really great day um it's kind of the kickoff to our rp so um maybe the best of all that is after hearing the news and talking to a lot of administrators we are full we actually are full at even the para level right now which to start a year with uh, every position filled in one way shape or another that we're, we should be very blessed and, and feel great about that. Um, been working, one of the new staff, I don't want to read them all, I'm sure it's been posted, but Scott Pierce has came in as our new AD. So a couple things this summer, just to praise the transition between me or me and Zach to Scott uh, athletically, he's done the job before, just like many of our new people have done, hit the ground running and it's been great. We've had two really good meetings about our at risk. That's a new, half of a new position or a new position for us. Um, and how that's going to work in our MTSS process using him. It may take a little bit just for our teachers to start to determine where they're at with their kids and who needs some, as, as Sue was saying, you know, remediation or intervention help, but we have someone that with boots on the ground that will do some of that work. So that's, that's awesome as well. Um, in general, it seems, I, I don't have anywhere close to new numbers, but it feels like we've had a lot of new staff, uh, new parents and family members walk in the hallways. I've given three or four tours in the last three weeks um, with new families. Um, I know our volleyball, football, cheer, and, and cross country numbers are up across all four of them. So that tells us our participation is fantastic. Kids are involved. Um, I think we're gonna see a lot of new families. I know 612 were up numbers, that's, that's for sure, because I'm looking at our splits, having to already do some juggling with certain classes and stuff. So it's a great problem to have when people wanna be here, when, when we're, getting them either OE or, or moving in. Um, and we'll hit the ground running tomorrow. Like I said, it's kind of the quickest one of the August because we're just, just getting back. But today was really good with new staff. Monday was really good. Uh, we've got a great day planned tomorrow. Uh, kids will be here on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week with a one o'clock dismiss and then rocking and rolling from, from then on. So what do you got, John? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I guess I'll just start. I just want to say thank you guys for entrusting you know, it, it's a principal job to me and I appreciate that. Um, I hope I, I bring some joy to all the families here in Baxter. I feel truly blessed to be here. Um, it's been here now 10 years in a variety of different roles. Um, truly love it and, and love that my family gets to grow up here. Um, so thank you guys for that opportunity. Um, over the summer, we've done a lot of things. We've had summer school going and rolling. Um, it's been a, a huge success. Uh, we've had a lot of focus on some sight words and words per minute and accuracy and seen a lot of games and the kids that have shown up consistently. I know our teachers, Mrs. Hogan, Mrs. Jacob, have worked really hard and are really proud of the work that they put in over the summer. Uh, and it's been a lot of successes from that summer work. Um, for me personally, I've been trying to communicate with my staff as, as much as possible, but not to overwhelm them, overwhelm them over the summer um, and making sure I'm communicating out with parents, especially as we start our new school year uh, on some of the routines and things that are new. Um, Rob mentioned that we brought Solution Tree in on Monday and working with Ted Gergen, um, who did a fabulous workshop for us, broke us out into multiple different groups to talk about the things that we're doing. He texted me after and said there were so many rich conversations and he just feels that we're in a really great spot with what we are doing with our collaborative teams. Um, so he was proud of the work that we did that day and ultimately we are too. Um, over the summer, I attended the SAI new principal training to be able to network with some new principals, um, to learn from principals in their position. So me trying to, to gain some expertise in my new position. Um, we took 
of team to CPI training, our special education department and paras to learn some restraint training to make sure that we're following the correct, correct photo protocols for um, dealing with children of, that have um, behavioral issues. Um, as Rob mentioned, I've also given a ton of family tours, um, new families to the elementary, show them around, meet the teachers, see the classrooms, and we'll continue to do that before school starts for those kids that are feeling a little um, anxious about the start of school. Um, we've worked a little bit through setting some goals. Uh, we did our SAMI, which is a assessment of our MTSS system in the elementary as we conclude school. And now we're trying to create some goals for this school year for how we want to uh, attack some of those opportunities of growth that the SAMI provided us. Um, and then our work, the teachers in the elementary had three days of work over the summer to work on uh, aligning our resources to the standards. Um, and so that work is done. So that gives us kind of a leg up on what we're starting right now. So I appreciate their hard work over the summer to get our math and reading resources aligned to the standards. So that's kind of what's going on in the elementary. How many kids did you have consistently in the summer? Uh, consistently, I'd say on, on average, we probably had 12 kids every day, um, upwards to 20 on a, on a great day. Okay. Yeah. And what grades were those? Kind of we had kids from grades one, two, three, and four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for Zach? Okay, thank you, Zach. Yeah. We're happy to have you here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our next item is our 2021-2022 Baxter Community School District APR report. So I asked both principals to talk just a little bit about uh, their buildings, but this is the what used to be the uh, APR. Now they use the Iowa Performance Profiles, kind of the state report card. And so um, it, the, met, the metrics change from year to year of what they're using to um, give you a rating. Um, and so we've done, I think, very well. I mean, one thing we talked about with Rob today was that, um, you know, he scored, his building scored so high last year and growth is such a big component of it. It's tough to stay at that, that high mark each time because of the growth. They grew <laughs> so much and you know, they made up a lot of ground. So um, we were quite pleased with um, the scores. But um, Zach, do you want to talk just a little bit? Or Rob, why don't you, why don't you go first, Rob? So yeah, just sure. give him a chance uh, to listen. That was probably what Mike had said was one of the biggest things. You know, you see, we're still at the, one of the top categories. And if there, there was no alarming, if you see it, that if you're not quite the number you were last time. So we dug into that. Uh, the growth was big. Um, we didn't lose kids on proficiency. Everything was right, really, where you wanted it. Uh, the piece that's that's in that that we really dug into over the summer, Travis and I especially, was the conditions of learning survey. So every student takes that survey, every teacher takes that survey, and then the parents that will fill it out, we send it home to every parent through JMC. So we feel that data is really good data. It, it covers lots of various topics. Um, and we scored again in the highest 5% in the state in all those categories of how people view the culture of our building, the safety of our building, um, how people are treating each other. Um, actually, parents scored probably a titch higher than even the kids viewed or the teachers viewed the building, which, you know, they're coming from an outside view, so you take it with a grain of salt, but it's nice to know that this is what parents think. We did target three or four questions, and when I get a little deeper with staff, I'll come back to you. Um, some areas of, I'm not concerned, areas of growth, areas that we just went, that's not a number that we're really proud of or happy of, why is that? And Travis and, and is already digging into things that we can do. Um, those are just around um, how students are treating each other in certain situations. So I don't want to use the word bullying because it wasn't really bullying, but some of that about how other students are making them feel. I think that's across the board. I think that should be something we are looking at, but that's a piece of the performance report card that was really high for us at conditions of learning, but it gives us so much data to take a look at, even from grade to grade, boy to girl, subgroups, all of that. It, it can be overwhelming. I mean, I think Travis and I talked for a couple hours and didn't even feel like we really dug super deep into it. Um, it'll be a piece I talk with our staff tomorrow, not heavy, but we'll get into that. But 
we're happy, commendable. I think we're at a 58 something. We've been a little higher than that before, but we're still top. It, you know, obviously a good number. So uh, we knew where we were with our with the Iowa assessments. Um, I would have said flat, but flat when you've already scored really well in previous couple of years. Flat sometimes you have to say, but we want to dig into subgroups, special ed subgroups specifically, is an area we're going to really dig into. So yeah, I'm happy, but always have work to do. Yeah, um, a lot of the same as Rob mentioned. Um, there was, again, we were commendable for the second year in a row, um, up slightly from 57.51 to 58.82 um, in that category. Um, a lot of um, a lot of that kudos to the work that, that the teachers do every single day. Um, really, some areas that really we thought were of strength were some of our growth in, in English language arts, which we put a, a major focus on over the last couple of years. Um, so we're seeing that that happening, that growth is, is happening with our students. Um, but we also want to make sure that the percent, percent proficient is, is, is where we need it to be, uh, and we're right there close. Um, and then another area of, now area of growth is per, percent proficient for ELA, obviously, and then growth in math. Um, and then areas that we may want to look at to, to really focus in on, as, as Rob mentioned, is the conditions of learning. Um, looking at that piece, obviously, again, the, the parent perception is really high. And our building is now taking a peek at our um, teacher perception of the system and making sure that we have systems in place that are um, meeting the needs of all of our learners and teachers. Zach won't say, but I think the elementary school higher than middle and high school. Yeah. I think they should so celebrate that. Yeah. Um, so the the elementary scored fifty eight point six seven, and the secondary was. Um, oh, Rob, I just closed yours. Um, <laughs> oh no, that was that was that was the element, the secondary, 58.67. Yeah, so and then J or Zach, who was 5882? Oh, no, 5882. And <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't even oh, they were right. like very close. That's why I'm so 58.82 and 58.6. I know we celebrated our numbers. What was it? Yeah. Three years ago, we made um, it close. I mean, we were incredibly high. And then last year, like the 2019, we were 63. Um, and then 20, there wasn't one. Yes. And then if you remember, this is the, the report card that got us on the SLS um, in 2018. Remember that? We're yeah. at the elementary, it's obviously. Broke elementary. That it, yeah, so um, that's been a lot of growth in the last four years. So um, Zach has it, really, they've put in some really good pieces and you know, kudos to Jason as well. Um, they put in some really strong foundational pieces to get us where we are now. And now it's just picking up where we um, left off and with Dr. Anderson's help with um, the high reliability schools and the instructional framework, we are doing the right work and we're gonna, we expect that we'll continue this trajectory. So we're pretty excited about that. Question for Rob: Has like graduation rate four years and then graduation rate five years? Is that five years? Is that a new category or um, they just keep looking at it now? So I don't think it's a new category. Okay, I don't think so. But I, I know in a district our size, one thing Travis and I looked at, and that's a piece that gets scored. And typically, we're really good there, but sometimes. It, you know, I'm dealing with a student today, actually, that's ready to go get a GED or DMAC diploma when it's one or two out of 25 or 30. I mean, that, right. it, it's tough. So yeah. the good is we put a face, I mean, to every data point that we have. So right. mm -hmm. that's good. That's, our grad rate's been really, remember, I think it was before COVID, we had that one classroom where we, in the, in the uh, workshop, we all sat there and put initials, and that was like four or five in a class that, for multiple reasons, didn't graduate. And that was, that yeah. was you can't. Get that. And where's the cutoff? I mean, sometimes they don't meet the requirements by graduation date, but if they do it like through the summer, it's yeah. already it's already been reported. So okay, so we, we're still at that yeah, point. We still help kids even after right. that, but they would be going go mm -hmm. against the summer. Any other questions on that? Thank you.
Okay, our next item is the 2022-2023 Baxter Community School District Professional Learning Plan. Okay, make sure you can all open that because Julie just couldn't. I can't. You cannot still. Um, Dr. Anderson sent it. Um, trying to. Here's one. So, can you open it now, Julie? I'll just not write up, write anything up here for that. Okay, I, I don't know what's, what's going on. Um, and now I just lost the whole agenda. I just didn't share it with you. Um, so, um, sorry, I, I just closed the school board agenda accidentally when I was <laughs> trying to share that. So, um, if you can glance at that, I'll just look at the thing from Wendy. Um, so what we have set up this year is um, we're going to really do a study with the high reliability schools and um, we're really focusing at different levels with different committees or different um, teams. So um, the safe and collaborative school culture is the one that, the, um, that we're starting with because if you don't have a safe collaborative culture, nothing else is going to work. So um, that book is being the study that we did it as a district leadership team and as a CIA team, um, curriculum instruction assessment team. And um, so we've started that. And so our focus is going to kind of rotate through the year or through the, the months. So we've got a five month or five week rotation. So the first week of the month is going to be a district um, group professional development that will be some aspect of uh, high reliability school or something that we need to focus on. And then the second and third um, Mondays of the month will be collaborative team time. So um, either a horizontal team, hor or a horizontal team, so like um, the middle school team. And then sometimes it'll be vertical teams. So it'll be like K-12 math. So you can get some vertical alignment. Um, sometimes the teams will be a little bit different and Robin and Zach jump in here too. But um, so we're going to have two of the two in a row. We'll have collaborative team time. And the fourth one was um, building level. So, you know, Rob might be needing to have a meeting with his staff or theirs might be something really specific they need to talk about with SRG or whatever. And Zach may have one that's about, I don't know, read the new uh, wonders curriculum or whatever. So that's the fourth. And then when there's a fifth, there's not always, but um, on a fifth, no, it is every fifth. It's not, so it's, it's every five weeks. That's how we set up. So on the fifth Monday of the rotation, we'll have either a district leadership team meeting. Um, so we'll, those people will always meet together on the fifth uh, Monday of the rotation. And if you're not on the district leadership team, then you'll use that time to work on um, either some, some additional collaborative time with your partners, or you can work on your individual professional development plans, um, or if you have a book study that you're working on, some kind of professional learning to help you individually. Um, that way we could keep the district leadership team because everyone's schedules are so crazy that if we were able to work it in on the Monday mornings, so we could get um, just more time. So the district leadership team, thankfully, they're willing to come in a bit early. So we, instead of meeting at eight, what do we come in at like seven or seven? They're earlier. And so we can have a little more time to get a nice big chunk of time to um, get just really get some good conversation going. So anyway, um, we're going to be focusing on the safe and collaborative culture and then effective teaching practices. So we are going to be using the book called The Art and Science of Teaching, and it all uh, it all fits together. High reliability schools, professional learning communities, the guest speaker we had on Monday from Solution Tree, they're all tied together. So if you look at the big picture, it's almost a little bit like kind of described it as they're all um, put out by Solution Tree, and they all uh, fit puzzle pieces that we're missing. So the art and science of teaching, their focus is on the most effective teaching practices. So when you have teachers in the classroom, they only have those kids for you know 40 minutes at a time, or in Zach's case, you know whatever, like a chunk of time, 90 minutes for reading. 
in those 90 minutes, what are the most effective things they can do to get the most bang for their buck for those kiddos? So we're looking at what are the most effective practices based on research that show the biggest effect size on kids. And that's what we want our teachers to do. And our teachers are going to be working on uh, learning those strategies and tweaking them and saying, you know, while that one's kind of a fun one that kids enjoy, there's no evidence to show that it actually helps kids learn. So let's stop doing that and start doing this, which is also something kids enjoy, but has a greater effect size. So that's what we're looking at. We're like really digging into the science behind learning. So that's um, going to be led by Dr. Anderson. And, you know, the, I think all teachers, if I remember right, we supported that book for all teachers, the art and science of teaching. And so we're going to use that as kind of a handbook. And then we're also working on um, the next level up is the guaranteed viable curriculum. So we're constantly tweaking that to make sure that um, the priority standards that teachers are teaching are the ones that are the most, the most valuable. And um, as we have new staff coming in, tightening up, like here's what Baxter says you need to teach in you know, 10th grade English or whatever. So we're working on some of that. Um, and then the, the next level of reliability school standards reference reporting which we already do that but there's always ways to make that even better and make it stronger so that's like you there's it's a pyramid so you start at the base which was the safe and collaborative culture then you get effective teaching practices then you get the guarantee and viable curriculum then you get the standard reference grading and then the, the peak which we're, we're not even anywhere near attacking yet is company-based competency-based education and that's when you've mastered a skill you just move on. So you may not stay in 10th grade, you may move on to, you know, the next class, or you may move on, and you might be a second grader, but you may be the master of second grade skills, and you're doing third or fourth grade skills now. And we do some of that on an individual basis, but it's more accelerated. It's, it's not a district wide initiative. And they say with high reliability schools, if you really dig in and do the work, it's going to take at least four to five years before you're even at the next that that peak level. So anyway, that's our plan for the year. And um, Dr. Anderson, if I mean, she'll be able to come. So she just wasn't available tonight. So she wanted to give you guys a chance to just look at the overall plan um, and let you know, like we do have a, a pretty solid I and mean, I feel as excited about the start of a school year as I ever have. I mean, like Rob and, and Jack said, we had a really good PD, the staff that was here, they didn't have to come on Monday. And I'd say, what would you say? 75% of our staff or more, 80, 90, there was almost everyone was there and it's their last couple of days before they have to be back to work. They wanted to be there, they crave it. They're excited about the learning. They're excited about the, just the togetherness. <laughs> it was just a really, really good, a good day. And then stay with our new staff. It was just so fun to see. And it is so interesting to have all these new veterans. So it was just really cool to hear their stories and to hear them talking about where they've been and some of the things they were glad they left behind and things they're excited about, things we do at Baxter. And they're, they were saying, you know, I came from another district and we weren't anywhere near what we're doing here. So that made us feel like, you know, we are, we, you know, it's nice to know we thought we were on the right track and we feel like we're on the right track, but just to have someone say, yeah, you're way ahead of where we, we were in other places. So that's, we're excited about that. Um, questions. And I'm sure if you have any specific questions about anything on here, Wendy would be happy to, um, you know, visit with you or whatever, too. Is Wendy there on Mondays for the professional yes. development? Yeah. So um, Colfax has theirs, I think, Wednesdays. <coughs> so okay. she's always here on Monday mornings for us. I, th I think she's Mondays and Thursdays at Baxter, but she's always here for, for professional development okay. for us. At the elementary level, how many brand new teachers do we have? Is it just one? Two. Two. Okay. Any other questions on our professional learning plan? Looks good. Yeah, we're really excited. I mean, I know I always sing Wendy's praises, but she is an absolute gem. Like, I hope we keep her forever. All right, we'll move on to our review of board policies. And they were uh, 700s through 1,000. 
Any board members come up with anything as you reviewed those? See, Michael and Julie have created a folder that has some yeah, so new items that they found that need to be. Yeah, I tried to label them as mandatory. We, we may want to review those because, like, there's one in there that I see, but I know we already have. Okay, I just uploaded like the ones that were just as they were they were released by ISB. So, so we'll just need to update our so, existing. Yeah. But I did label the ones that say mandatory. Those are ones that are, we have to have, but the other ones are not mandatory or maybe optional. You can have them if you want, but. Do we need to go through those tonight or? No, let's not. Yeah, do you want to just maybe like, this will just be the first read. You can glance through them and then Julie and I can comb through them again and see which ones are that we already have that we can like see if there's just a little update to or anything. I'll make that a list of no question. Okay, so the board members have some homework for the next meeting. <laughs> we'll go through those. <laughs> and if we, uh, if Julie and I get through them, I can send a link out to you with the ones with the updated numbers or whatever. Some of those, some of the mandatory ones, like this one's uh, 50114, open enrollment transfers. So there's options for language. When mm -hmm. when would we choose which option we want to have in there? At next when, Okay. At the end of gotcha. So normally what we would do is if we already have the existing policy, mm -hmm. we would show you the existing policy and then put the new language in red so that you knew what they were saying. Suggesting or mand mandating that we change, so that's what we'll we'll go back, we'll go back and look at it and compare it to see what okay. we have and what it should be. Okay. Yeah, most of these in the folder go from the email that you sent to us, right? Yeah. That's what those. Yeah. Are, right? Yeah. And the ones that are not mandatory, we just have to decide if, if we want to have them or not, because there's a million policies right. they put out every year, okay. and you don't have to adopt all of them. They're just if you want to, you can. Not a million. Feels like a million, but. So I assume like the open enrollment one, they're just doing away with the dates on it yeah. now because the law has changed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so yeah. you already have a policy, we'll just have to go in there and, just and match our the language. Policy. Right. So you'll go in and take our current policy. Yeah. And, and we'll add what they say is new. What the difference we'll show is. you that. We'll yep. show you. Highlight it yep. or whatever. Yeah. Can we expect that in a couple of weeks then? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll get right on it. Well, I'm just saying. I'm serious. So I'll get right on it. By next meeting. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You'll have it in plenty of time. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, we'll move on to facilities, grounds, and transportation. Um, this one's mostly just a big thank you to the custodial staff. I mean, they have been just working like crazy this summer, and the building looks great. And if you see, they just like today were painting those walls, and they look Ooh. great. I mean, they might even still be wet, so don't touch them. Um, they just—it looks so fresh, and just really brightens it up. Oh my gosh, it's like night and day. So that we're excited, excited about that. But they just all over the place. They've been working hard, um, just getting the school ready for kids to come back. And so I just want to acknowledge their hard work. Um, and they've even just with us having meetings or, you know, we were had a big staff meeting in here yesterday or Monday, and then we had the tape, the coaches all set up today for the uh, new teacher day. And then I was like, you know, we've got a board meeting tonight. So, so they were scrambling to find the table and I said, just leave them. And then, cause we've got another meeting in here tomorrow. So just even this week is insane with just all the meetings and all the staff and all the things that we have going on. So they've just been um, truly fantastic so new I, phones today oh yeah and we got new phones finally rob can right. stop complaining right. about the phones yeah we don't know I'll move on to <laughs> i'm sure he will um <laughs> but no they um are it, it's really nice to have these new phones they work and they uh, they're 
it's a really we get thing in yeah like yeah <laughs> you you've lived it you've all heard me and, and all yeah. of us complain about these phones for at least four years now that i've been here we've five heard about the phones so it's just fantastic that we finally have new phones so who would have thought you'd be so excited about an old school phone on the wall but we are probably the only place left that doesn't have cell phones but it's yeah we're very excited about the new phones so they're actually still in the process. They were here yesterday and today, and they're coming back tomorrow and getting them all up, up and up and running. Uh, otherwise, as far as facilities, um, I was at a meeting with um, the local police, the superintendents and police, and then I was at a meeting at the DE last Friday, and we were talking about the um, safety grant. And so I got a few more details about that. So from my understanding, and they're still rolling things out a little bit of details at a time. Um, we should be able to get um, $50,000 per build, like building within our school. So elementary, middle school, high school, in order to make, um, so we should at Baxter be able to get $150,000 so that we are able to make safety upgrades. So I'm gonna meet with um, our new chief of police. He's able to do the um, safety audit or whatever so he and i are going to walk around and uh, come up with what safety things he he suggests we uh, implement and then um, we just will apply with the de and i believe it's one of those things where we spend the money and turn in the receipt and then we get the money back so um, i'm i'm excited to be able to have that opportunity to put in some some things that we really are needing but schools just don't have the money for so take his email Oh yeah. I thought it would go out today. To yep, it did. Getting a radio, possibly maybe more than one mm -hmm. school, as far as you know, phones are out or whatever. You can still use radios to communicate with law enforcement mm -hmm. throughout the building. Mm -hmm. um, so. And we have one. I think is it just one in Angie's office right now, or are there two? <laughs> that which the big, there's a, up, and you can just hit the. She can go yeah, okay. she hits that red button and it just immediately goes to the police and she can just say, hey, we have an intruder, we need help. She doesn't have to call anybody, she doesn't have to dial it, she just hits that button and it's the uh, holy smokes button. So yeah, the way I understand it's like October 21st to apply for it. But yeah, yep, I got that email today. Yeah. So so anyway, um Officer Hicks and I, or not Hicks, Daggett, the new guy's Daggett. Um, have been in quite a bit of contact about all this. So it's nice to have um, a police chief back in town again who's excited about helping us. So, and you'll see down a little further, we're going to have a um, conversation about FRO and a sharing agreement. So, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to open enrollment. Looks like we have a couple open enrollment in applications. Okay. How about first. So, um, Michelle Cryer. I don't know if that's how you say it, um, for her son, Robert Peterson, um, a student from Newton. So he, um, this little guy moved to our district <coughs> or lived in our district or lived in a different district, open enrolled, and then left to go to a different district. And we had told the mom, when, when you leave, you know, he has pretty significant special needs. And um, we said, if you want to come back, we're going to deny the open enrollment. You just need to know that ahead of time. So um, she left anyway, and now she wants to come back. So I'm recommending we do not um, approve this one. Our special ed departments are full, and it's impossible, to, not impossible, but almost impossible to find staff. We're very lucky that we have all our positions filled right now because districts everywhere are in desperate need of teachers, bus drivers, support staff all over the place. So um, I recommend we do not approve that one. And then um, for Karen Cunningham to approve her grandson, Noah Dilley, to continue to attend Baxter after a recent move into our district, or a recent move into Newton, but to come to Baxter. And so um, that one, we have space in his classroom. So that one, I recommend we approve. And then do you want me to do the out right now? Or uh, let's just do um, this? We'll do that. Please first. Okay. Uh, any board questions or discussion? What grade is the um, going into fourth? Going into fourth. Uh, 
I mean, we discussed that before. Mm -hmm. I think we denied it last last year already once when um, she wanted to come back. I think I think she thought with the dead with the deadline being lifted that maybe she would just try again. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like we had the discussion with her before right. she left, and as we talked last meeting, it's, we don't have the staff to serve them. It's not doing anybody any good to get stretched too thin. Any other discussion on that? Questions on it? Someone like to make a motion on the first one for the Michelle Cryer for her son Robert Peterson. I'll make a motion. That motion would be to deny. Okay. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? All in favor, aye. All the same sign. Motion is approved to deny that application due to uh, our district not having the uh, special ed resources to serve. Uh, Okay, the next one is on Karen Cunningham for her grandson Noah Dilly. Any questions on that? Great school. Yep, sixth grade. Any other questions? Somebody like to make a motion on that one? That would be to approve that. Okay. We have a motion to approve the open enrollment for Karen Cunningham for her grandson, Noah Dilly. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is approved to approve that and then open this, enrollment oh, application. And then this last one um, for Ron Shipper for his daughter, Lauren, to attend Clayton Ridge, um, the Iowa Virtual Academy. Uh, Robin Baxter. So she was a Baxter student, but wants to go to the online school instead. <laughs> and she made it. I mean, there's no deadline, so we pretty much have to approve it. Any questions on that one? Now, they get the full, that online, they get the full weighting on that, right, mm -hmm. for as far as state funding? Because yeah. they, they're not like when we had offered the Zoom or the um, an online, they're an approved online school. There's a handful of them in the state, and they're one of them. Any other questions on that? So we'd like to make a motion on that open enrollment out application. Mm -hmm. make a motion to approve the open enrollment out application for Ron Shipper and his daughter Lauren. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Open enrollment out application is approved. Okay, we'll move down into personnel. We'll take the resignations first, if you'd like okay. to speak to those. So we have Dan Toon as assistant girls basketball coach. And crap, that's on the wrong one. It's uh, supposed to be under contract. Uh, so oh, sorry, D Braden. Yeah. Okay. So just Dan as um Older brother. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I get with Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so just just Dan for the resignations. Okay. Do we need to approve um, Padge? I don't know anything about Padge. That he, I mean, as he went to Rolling Story, did we have to approve his resignation as our tech guy, or did we do that last month? We did it. Already. Oh, okay. Sorry, I just didn't remember. That's okay. Okay. Any board comments or questions on the uh, resignation of Mr. Toon? Okay, do we have a motion to approve that resignation? Do we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign. Resignation is approved for Dan Toon as assistant high school girls basketball coach. Okay, we'll move into new contracts. Okay. So we have Angela Morgan as um, an elementary teacher, and she'll actually be teaching fourth grade for us, but we just, it's a general elementary contract. So Bill Daggett as SRO, and I can, if you scroll down, I probably should have like linked it up there, but we have a contract. Um, SRO is one that was just approved this year as an operational sharing position. 
So you can share that with the city. Um, and I don't know if the city, they won't get any benefit from the Department of Education. They may have their own funding sources of, if, you know, for sharing, but the district will get two FTEs for it, um, for sharing. So we have to share a minimum of 20%. So our contract with the, the city will be for um, a minimum of eight hours uh, per week. And Bill has been in and out um, lots of, he popped in today and um, we were in a meeting already. So he didn't stop in, but he left no, or texted me. <clears throat> and um, he plans to be active in the school. He uh, wants to have an office here at the school or you know, be in the halls and I told him that Mr. Luther really thought it would be a good time to have him here during over the lunch hour. And so he was going to try and make that work into his schedule. So um, we're just really excited about it. Um, we're excited about the possibility. And we think with, I know that in the past, maybe it started out strong, but now with the 28E, with the Department of Ed and requirements, they have to be here 20% of the time. So um, we're actually paying this part of this. Yeah, so we'll or... we'll pay a little bit of the money back to the city. We'll have to see what where what, what that what... comes through. At. We'll, we'll probably have to bring it back to you because it doesn't say anything about that in the 28E, yeah. which it should. He sent us the 28E, and so it didn't really have everything in it that we officially need. And because at the time that he sent it, he wasn't aware of the operational sharing. He just wanted to share for, at no cost. Like he just wanted to be a part of the district. So the city would still pay a salary and he just wanted to be a part of us. So um, as, he had the same agreement when he was at Van Meter. And um, as long as he was part of the school as an employee, then we had um, the right to share information with him just as we would any other employee. So he could sit in some of our at-risk meetings or um, he could share information that he had with, um, you know, maybe there was a family that had a really rough situation that, you know, Rob should know about or Zach should know about so that he could help kind of handle the kids with care. So anyway, um, when he was at Van Meter, he didn't even get paid extra to be part of the school. And so that was the original agreement that we had talked about is that he would just almost be a volunteer, but be part of the district. But then we found out about operational sharing. So the district will get money and we'll have to discuss how we want to or work with the city, how we'll want to, um, you know, pay for part of that or whatever. But either way, even if there wasn't operational sharing, he wants to do it regardless. So we're excited about that. It will be really nice to have someone around, um, even just even if he's not here in the building, to have someone in the community that I can text or call right away. And they'll be right here. So. Okay, so we'll go back up. That was kind of a long spiel about <laughs> Bill Daggett. Um, so then Kyle Strive as the co-head high school golf and middle school football coach, Randy Gleam as the middle school high school girls wrestling coach, uh, Brad Tingley as technology director, Braden Aker as volunteer assistant high school football as recommended by coach, head coach Rob Luther, Corey Beals, assistant girls basketball coach. And then I didn't know exactly because it was a proving contract. So I stuck that there. It's not really a person, but it's a DMAC, um, we just need to approve the contract for students to come observe doing that. Like um, we've done it for forever. So we just need to approve that contract as well. So that's the link to the contract, but I, I don't know if that's exact. We'll just need to do it separately. Okay. So those are all the staff contracts. And then the DMAC one is. Do we have DMAC kids come here or are they our own kids that are going to DMAC that are doing some observation? DMAC kids we get would be the ones we have at the teaching academy and career academy. Ever had them, we probably. That's what I wondered if we ever actually we could. Had we that's could. What the agreement right. 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 We've yeah. never had yeah. them. Most of the ones that are high school do act like that. Just go back to rural high school. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But we often get, I get emails pretty frequently from some of the universities asking yeah, we have for an agreement. agreement. With Iowa State and yeah. Iowa, um, I think Grandview maybe has been reaching out to me. And I'm always like, yeah, the more the merrier. If we can, and then especially if we can get teachers in the door. Yeah. And they see Baxter and they see who we are and what we're about. And then we can watch them teach for a semester or 16 weeks or whatever and see if there's somebody we want. Um, so I'm all about if we can get a student teacher in here. So. Sometimes they found supervising student teachers on a separate call. And then I asked about AG. They have seven Iowa State people to this call, student teachers, because I was going to reach out in October to knowing that we had a one year AG. Five of the seven have already taken contracts before they student top of districts. Wow. Yeah. 
that'll tell you the way of where this is going. Because I thought I've been ready about October 1. I'm going to jump on this. Five of the seven ag people have not student taught yet and already signed contracts for 23, 24. Do we have one more? <laughs> what about the other two? Real quick, some other colleges to talk. Yeah. I'm actually sweet talk, Mr. Funnel. We'll see how year one goes. <laughs> <laughs> Week one goes. We'll see. So the girls are asking, Coach, that's kind of a new. That's a new position. So is that, a, that would be that's added to the uh, schedule. Yeah. Yep. That would be that's brand new in the state, right? Like it's officially sanctioned because before they shared with boys. <laughs> we, we could have, Zach and I were on the group and on top of this, we could have shared that with another district to save that coach, but then we're paying transportation probably. We could have chosen not to probably, you know, we're trying to grow that sport. We have three or four right now. So um, some are finding different times to wrestle away from the boys, but the state has said right now you can still practice together, but you cannot have a girl wrestle on boys. So we've had to find a separate meet schedule for our girls, but they can still practice in the same room at the same time. So we'll provide Randy some support there. She'll have to take the girls to the meets. And I think the four that we have are high school. Right? They are. I don't know that we're going to have to middle school for girls wrestling. But it's good thing, but well, that's the thing that's knocking it out of the park with their girls' wrestling. Oh, they wanted us to go share it. Okay. Okay. All these coaches, they have their coaching endorsements then. And All the greats finishing up across the team. Not nice. Trying. Randy, I don't, I think that's she does. still, she's all done. Mm -hmm. so I got four. it. Okay. okay. Um, that stride does, you know, deals does. He's gonna come yep. to Everybody has to. Okay. So we want to leave the SRO off of this list for now. Maybe make sure they get the right papers. Probably could. Yeah. I mean, like know in general, are you serve that? It's yeah. just what the, what the I just want to make conversation sure. gonna be. Yeah. We can approve the pending. Okay. Contract for this. Yeah. Twenty-eight. Okay. Twenty-eight. Yeah. All squares. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with it. Oh. I can see it on the thing. Oh, you can still see it. Yeah. What was it doing? It just went like. Oh. But you is it yep, still broken? So okay. Yeah. Okay, any other board questions on the contracts? So, Corey, I agree with you. We'll maybe pull that uh, SRO position out for right now, along with the DMAC one. And then uh, somebody would like to make a motion to approve the other contracts as presented. So moved. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Motion and second, all in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign. Contracts are approved as presented. Okay. Corey, do you want to make a motion on Mr. Daggett and the SRO? So, 2080 agreement with the city or something to that effect? Yeah, funding, I guess, now that funding structure didn't work. Yeah. Okay. I'll say pending the funding stream. Motion for that effect? Or? Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Motion of second. All in favor, aye. Both same sign. Contracts approved pending funding and 2080 agreement with the city for Mr. Daggett for the SRO position. Okay, now we'll take the DMAC observation contract. Any questions or comments on that? Said before, I think we've done those in the past. Yeah. So, uh, somebody would like to make a motion to approve that DMAC observation contract? Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a motion, a second. All in favor, aye. 
Both same sign. Motion to approve for the DMAC observation contract. Okay, we'll move into superintendent's report. Okay. Um, we've talked about a lot of this already. So we're getting all set for the kids to come back on the 23rd. Um, we have early out on Tuesday and Wednesday that week. So um, just to kind of ease them back in a little bit. And then go all day Thursday, Friday. Uh, we have our first football game this Friday night. It's a scrimmage at Martin Sale. Um, open house. Uh, we're going to do that a little differently this year. Uh, instead of having it before school, the teachers, um, we did a survey and just with their feedback, they really wanted to do it a few days after school started. So kids had an actual chance to get to know their teacher a little bit and the teachers got to know the kids. So then when the parents and kids came in, they could you know, show a little bit of the work they've done or the kids could show them their desk or show them their locker. And um, teachers just really thought it would be more effective to have it after school started. So it's more of an open house than a back to school night. And then we also host a home volleyball game that night. So we tried to find out that there wasn't anything conflicting, but there just wasn't. So the thing we liked about that night was that there's a home game that night. So we thought people could, if they choose, could go to the uh, open house and then hopefully stay and support our volleyball team. Um, we thought that could be a really nice, just community feel that night and support our girls. So we're excited about that. Um, we had an administrative retreat with Zach and Rob and I, and it was uh, really good. We went to Heartland and um, we had to, the three of us had to take these um, surveys and it was called, there was like three different ones, like the disc survey. And then there was like a values index and what was the other one? I don't know, but they, they then they take this information and they um, kind of make a picture of who you are and how you operate. And it was really, valuable information because then it showed us, you know, where are areas that we overlap, where are areas that we have blind spots and where are areas that, you know, I'm very different than Rob and Zach's very different than both of us or whatever. Um, so it, was, it just was a really interesting way to show us how we work best together. And then just being aware of that, it was, it was actually kind of funny. They, you know, read something we're like, oh my gosh, that is so Rob. And then, or they'd read it and they'd be like, oh, that is Clapper. And so it was just, it was a lot of fun. And it was just a, a nice time too to just have the three of us, you know, Zach being new and in this new role to just kind of have a little bit of that administrative bonding because there's, you know, it's a tough business. And when it all, you know, the heat is on, it's it's just the three of us. So um, it was it was kind of nice just to have that time together. Um, so that was that was good. We went to that I don't know, last week or two weeks ago. Um, teacher apprenticeship grant. So uh, that's been really interesting. Um, there's still giving us bits and pieces of that as we go along and it's um, kind of building the plane in the air, but we're still glad to be a part of it. Um, we've got a handful of teacher or of paras, I think three or four, I, I had another one reach out to me today that are interested in uh, pursuing this. And so it's a partnership with all the Jasper County schools and um, we've signed a memo of agreement or a memo of understanding with William Penn. And so William Penn has, um, decided that if, if schools or, or students are going to do this, they'll cap the tuition at $5,000 a year. So as a para could, the first two years are paid for through the grant. And then um, the, the next two years are, are not paid for as, as it is now. They're trying to figure this all out. But as it seems now, the last two years are not paid for. But one thing that um, they are doing is they'll pay a district 50% of the Paris salary for those first two years. So one of the ideas Julie and I talked about was banking that um, mm -hmm. the salary of each para that's in this program and just kind of putting it in a little pool then that we can use in year three and year four to pay for their tuition. Because the thought is if you can get them to finish their degree and stay, then you'd have a ready supply of teachers. And if you can hire a teacher with zero years experience versus getting one. And we have some great new teachers, but they're great expensive teachers because they all have experience, which is, you know, it's, you get what you pay for sometimes, but not always. And so, and we can have some real gems with less experience that will start lower on our pay scale. So over time, the $10,000 we'd pay out to pay for their tuition 
would more than pay for itself if you have to hire a veteran with you know 10 or 15 years experience so um we're very excited about that it's we're just there's so many little intricacies that we're trying to navigate through and um it's a bit frustrating but it's going to be worth it but i mean thank you goodness for Newton's superintendent and their district because he's heading it all. So he's giving us bits of information as he, the moment he finds out, he lets us all know. So I just want to publicly thank Tom at um, Newton for his support through all this because without him kind of figuring it all out, none of us would have it. So we're very thankful for the partnership and even just the partnership with Jasper County Schools. Like we've started really meeting a lot more frequently with like the police and we, and we do that monthly thing. And then this teacher apprenticeship grant, like we're all, um, we're all living in the same kind of situation right now. I mean, there's a lot of schools that aren't fully staffed and we're so thankful that we are fully staffed. I mean, I just watched a show or a news clip this morning when I was getting ready on channel 13, I think it said Des Moines Public still has 45 open teaching positions. And I mean, school starts Tuesday. So it's, it's gonna be tricky for a lot of places. So we are very fortunate to be in the situation we are. Um, oh, website. Um, I've been working on the website and you know, I'm clearly not the tech guy, but um, I'm, if you go to our website, you just click on home. I don't know if I don't have the thing, otherwise I'd turn it on and you guys. So at home, if you want to get on the school website, um, we've made some, I've tried to add some links. So if you click on that, if you just go right to the home page where it says about Baxter, if you click on that, um, I can kind of, I'll try and show you the best I can here. Um, so let me go back. So here's the home page. So if you go to about Baxter, it's gonna take you to this link with our mission statement and our vision. And this is all that work we did in the last couple of years. And then down here is our collective commitments, but I put it on here in um, the kid friendly language that you had asked for. So our promise to our students, and this is, Put that on there. Um, let's see. District. The tech guy could have probably done this in like five minutes. It's taken me like two months. To... Okay. Uh, resources. No, nope, that's. Oh, yeah. Um, resources over here. Um, if you go to that, that's some different resources. And if you click on the curriculum one, it's pretty basic right now. But um, like we said, we would put the. Um, the curriculum stuff on there when school unrolled or when school comes back in August. So you've got a link to the Iowa Core Standards. And then for our elementary, we've linked our Wonders curriculum and our Illustrated Math curriculum. And then um, if you have an objection, like objection materials, there's the link right here. And then it takes you to, um... oh, that's not right. Shoot, okay, I'm gonna fix that. It takes you to the field house agenda, which is not what it's supposed to take you to, but it takes you to those documents. So um, I'll correct that as soon as I get back to my office. But it, it's just the same ones that we approved in uh, January, and then we were just kind of waiting on it. So um, I'm glad we did that. Otherwise, I would have been like, people would have tried to find that. And like I said, not the tech guy. So I will um, get that updated. But the tech guy, yeah, he just started. He started month, last Monday, um, and I think he's he'll be fine. But it, it's a little overwhelming because he started like, and right now is a time of year when everybody wants a tech guy for everything. And so, if you're the tech guy that's been here for a long time, or even more than one week, you'd um, be ready to roll. But I mean, today he sat in our new teacher PD, and um, you got to know everybody. But that so much of it wasn't really relevant to him. So I almost felt bad, like, oh gosh, we should just let that poor guy go and like do tech things. But it was good for him to you know, get to know the new teachers a bit. Um, so I think he'll be great. He's just so new. Like it's just coming at him like a fire hose. So um, like, cause I asked him a couple of questions if he could, cause I don't know how to update like the pictures of the old teachers, like our who left the district. I don't know how to get that updated because it's like a spreadsheet. He's like, yeah, I can do that. I just need to know which teachers are now. So he'll be able to do it. He just isn't able to do it quite yet. So um, that's really about all I've got for you, I think. Unless you have any questions. As far as that curriculum piece, are we going to add more to like high school stuff? Well, really the high school teachers, um, they use the Iowa core as their, um, their curriculum. Those are what they use. So they don't really, there aren't, our intent really isn't to link all the, like, 
articles and the textbooks. I mean, unless it, if that's what you guys really want, we can do that. Otherwise, like their their curriculum is driven by the standards. So that's what what they use. And, and is that on there somewhere? The like, standard, or or that just noting that? Yeah. Yeah, we could probably for, note that so people aren't like, or, yeah. what about the secondary school? Yeah. yeah, we can make a little note of that. So, okay, I'll note that. Hey, anybody have any questions for Clapper? Anything more? Maybe um, what did we talk about on the phone? And I said, remind me to say that. Uh, it was about our staffing level. Oh, okay. I mean, yes, we covered Rob that. Rob covered that. Yeah. And we're good for bus drivers. We don't have any. Yeah. So um, we called one back from the bullpen. So Carrie is back with us. Um, it, it, we have one in the works that's uh, getting her bus license. She just doesn't have it yet. So as soon as she gets it, she's um, hopefully going to help us. And then I don't know if Carrie is, I, I don't know exactly if he wants to do it long term or if he's just filling in. Um, but we're just thankful that he's filling in. Um, so I think we're good there uh, as far as I think we have enough custodians, enough. Spanish, we're going to do the Spanish. We're doing that same thing. Yeah, and actually, there was a Zoom tonight at six o'clock. Um, Trent was going to watch that for us. So I, I don't know how that went, but um, there was one there was Monday one was and then one today. I can't remember why. She just said the first presentation to do it. The flasher was good and felt really good. Mm -hmm. I think Johnny Gear and I think the kids just don't really hear it when you speak. And, mm -hmm. It's okay. And it's, it's different, but it, it really is. I mean, after COVID, they learn how to do stuff online. And so it, and then having Stacia in the room has been, I think, really helpful. I mean, I can only speak from like my own kids' experience, but I mean. Is Stacia doing that again? Yeah, Stacia's doing it again. I think a little bit more hit than the issue of last year, but I think we have somebody who was from home, which was on the council. That's not good, but it's just switching subjects, but not very long. We, we have, I just got our PMAC list back. Uh, 27 kids going to the PMAC career academy, which is by far the most we've had going over here, which mm -hmm. I think is fantastic. And you know, there's a couple of them on Bayview, Northern Trades, Business Admin, Criminal Justice, Melbach, Teacher Academy, well, they did one more than year two, Auto Division. I mean, that's when you think of just juniors and seniors, we probably only have seven to 27. So, third of our kids will you know, have to take any college credit or if you want to trade. So we're lucky in that way. Do they all go to the Newton all campus then? Yeah. Now we will have kids that take the my classes that aren't career academy classes. Most of those are online. We have a few kids that will go on campus at Iowa State, but if they're DMAC, I don't know if we've had a, we, we have one go to Ankeny. Um, probably have over the last few years, but Not he's graduated now. Board, have any other questions? We have a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. We have a second. The motion is second. All in favor to adjourn, say aye. Opposed, same sign. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Question. I know when it was more informal, we weren't online. I could just raise my hand. And have you checked with William Penn to make sure they were using the same teaching methods you were just talking about? Um, I haven't checked with them for several years, but at one time they were not. But things change. Yeah, the time I just to say yeah, change. I don't know. They're, um, they I just thought it'd be easier on the parents if they were. Yeah, so it's, they, they went through the um, I work with development. And... Yeah.
state program. Yeah, I, so, I know they have to, uh, the state board has to approve those things every so often. I understand. Yeah, that, I don't but, know exactly what But there are so many variances out there. I was just thinking it'd be easier on the parents if they're actually getting something similar to what you guys are doing. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not exactly sure, but the guy that set it up is a former superintendent from Lindo Sully. So he's pretty familiar with what's going on. Yeah, and they've got a good program yeah. over there. So, so I just yeah. thought I would ask. Yeah, no, I'm. You bet. happened okay okay i don't know how to get to that oh here we go hello 